Hello grade 10, welcome to Academic Coordinates. In this video, we are looking at hyperbolic functions. It's functions of this nature, right? It are uh, like wing functions or functions with wings or functions that look like wings, whatever. It's going to help you to sleep at night, right? They have got a general form of y is equals to a divided by x plus q, where a and q are constant, right? So before we can go any further, I want us to plot this function together, right? Y is equals to 1 over x. And stuff are going to happen on this function, right? It's going to be shifted up, it's going to be shifted down, and stuff like that is going to be stretched and everything. But this is the function that we are moving from, right? So if we can take our, you know, good old table method, technique on plotting graphs where we're going to have the x here and then we're going to have y here so basically what we do we just want to choose a bunch of x values you know minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 so just any values guys that are going to help us to at least appreciate or have a can I, how can I put it um show us a function you know to some degree so basically if we insert x here we're gonna have one divided by three or negative one over three here it's gonna be negative one over two then here it's gonna be negative one over one you know what I'm saying and then one divided by zero it's undefined right this one is undefined. You know what I'm saying? So basically, anything, any number you divide by zero is undefined, right? You can even check yourself. If you divide yourself by zero, you're going to be undefined. I mean, like, hey, you know what I'm saying? And then one divided by one is one. One divided by two is a half there. And then here we're going to have one over three, right? Then when it's now time to plot, guys, when I have the y axis there, obviously this is not drawn to scale. Okay, I think this is a bit to the left. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is the x axis right here. So we must have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, 3. Right? Okay, fine. So now it's time to plot this thing. Alright, so. At negative 3, where x is equal to negative 3, we have got um, y is equal to negative 1 over 3. Let's say it's somewhere here. Then when x is a half, right here, sorry, when x is negative 2, and then we're going to have minus a half, so it's going to be somewhere here. There is negative 1 over 3, then minus a half somewhere here. Where x is equal to negative 1, our y is gonna be maybe negative. It's gonna be negative one. So let's say it's somewhere here. And then now, when x is equal to zero, our function is undefined. So at this line, this is the line x is equal to zero. That is the y axis. So our function there is undefined. Let's continue. At x is equal to one, our function is gonna be one. Uh, okay, wait. Our function is gonna be one. And then at x is equal to two, our function is gonna be a half. So it's gonna be somewhere here. Then here, uh, our our function is going to be mine. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a one over three. So we can join it like this. So we can see this function looks like wings and stuff, you know. And another thing that we took note of, guys, is that the function is not defined here. So basically, in these functions, we're going to appreciate the whole, you know, topic of a domain, right? So, looking at the function that we have, right, if I can ask you guys, what is the domain of this function? What is the domain of this function, right? So, as far as domain we are speaking of, uh, the set of x values, right? So, basically, um, so the function is defined everywhere except at um, x is equals to zero. So, x is an element of real numbers however x must not equals to zero 
So this is the domain of the function. So what we mean is that when we're from this, when we're from the left, it's like negative infinity. We go, 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 go. The function is defined, defined, defined. Then at x, sorry, at um, x is equal to zero. Yeah, the function is not defined. So we go again. It's, it starts to be defined. Then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, until infinity, right? Or you can also write the domain like this: x is an element, you know, from negative infinity until zero, right? However. A bracket like this means that you have not included zero. But if I place like square brackets like this, it should mean that I included zero. So um, um, x is an element from negative infinity until zero, and then I'm going to union that with zero and up to positive infinity. So this is the part, and this is the part. So that is how we look at hyperbolic function. What about the range, guys, of this function? What about the range of this function? So if you can look from negative infinity going up, 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 the function is defined. You know what I'm saying? Defined. But here, you know what I'm saying? At this point, um, the function is not defined. You know what I'm saying? The function does not actually even touch this line, right? But it gets closer and closer and closer to the line, but it does not touch the line. And after um, y is equal to 0, the function is defined. So basically, even here, our range, right? Element of real numbers, but y cannot be equal to zero. Or we can also write it like this as well, right? If we ask you guys for the range, zero to positive infinity. You know what I'm saying? So that is that is um how we actually look at these things. You know? Okay, fine. So now let's begin to appreciate. Isn't it that our function is, okay, let me grab this, this color. Our function is y is equal to, let me add my page. Our function is y is equal to a divided by, sorry, this is a divided by x plus q, right? So what in the world does this a has on the function, right? So the a affects the shape, right? Of the graph such that if a is positive right your function will be on the first quadrant and the third quadrant if a is negative your function is gonna be on the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant do you guys get what I mean so just keep that in mind if a is a positive value if this is a positive value your function is going to be here and here. If this is a negative value, your function is going to be here and here. Do you guys get that? However, these are the things that just helps you. You know what I'm saying? But when you actually uh, work stuff out, you will be able to see that your function has to be in those particular quadrants. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. And then now, guys, what about Q? What in the world does this Q does on the function? So, um, in this case, man, Q shifts the function, shifts the function, the function vertically, vertically, right? Okay, so Q actually here has got a very, very, very special name, you know what I'm saying? So basically, let's say your Q is greater than zero, right? And Let's just say a is greater than 0 and q is greater than 0. So you know that your function must be on the first and the second quadrant. So let's say there is your q there. y is equal to q actually. There is q right here. So now we are going to have a new um, first quadrant, which is this one. And then the third quadrant is going to be this one, right? So it's going to be defined by the y-axis and this um, q right here. So q is actually q is the horizontal horizontal asymptote. Right? That is q for you. It's the horizontal asymptote. It's y is equals to q. So the asymptote, the graph, approaches it but never touches it. In fact, um, at q, the function is not defined. You know what I'm saying? 
So basically, when Q is greater than 0 and A is greater than 0, this is how your graph will look like, right? What happens when Q is less than 0 and A is greater than 0, right? So more or less the same thing. So Q now will be below. Let me leave my page. Q will be below. There is your Q right there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So this is going to be your first quadrant and this is going to be your third quadrant. Do you guys get that? Tell me what happens when um, A is less than 0, right? And Q is greater than 0, for example. You know? So Q is going to uh, shift the, the function vertically upwards, Q unit. So basically, uh, this is what we have. So there is your Q right there, it's the asymptote. And then now your function is going to be in this quadrant and in this quadrant. Do you guys see that? And then lastly now, if A is less than 0 and Q is less than 0, what is going to happen? So what is going to happen here is that um, we're going to have a new quadrant. You know, I use that um, term. A statement very loosely there you're going to have minus q right here then your function is going to be in this quadrant and in this quadrant do you guys get that okay fine so let's uh, look at the domain of this function in much more detail okay guys so the domain of f of x is equals to a divided by x plus q okay so we know guys for a fact that um our function is defined you know everywhere except at the asymptote right so basically the domain of this function obviously x is going to be an element of okay let's say our f of x is equals to one divided by x for this one we know that x is an element from now it is infinity to zero then union that from 0 to um, positive infinity. So as far as the domain is concerned, even if, even if a function is like this, right? What you must take note, guys, for domain is that whatever thing is under the, the fraction, it, that thing needs not to be 0. Oh, okay, let me just um, fix my English now. This must not equal to 0. Or you can say x is an element of real numbers however x must not equal to zero so this is the domain of this function you know you know what i'm saying however now if you're doing grade 11 this might slightly change because there is a there, are, there is an extra information that you will need to take into account what about the range now of the function you know what i'm saying what do you think the range of the function would be actually you know so just take note. So obviously for this one, it's going to be the same. However, let's look at this one. f of x is equals to a divided by x plus q. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fine. So now the range of the function. Okay? Um, range is, um, we look at the set of y values. You know what I'm saying? So basically we have got y is equals to a divided by x plus q right okay so let us take um q the other side or in fact let's subtract q both sides y minus q is equals to i'm going to do an actual example where you guys will see this thoroughly and you'll begin to appreciate it right so do not worry as i'm doing it like this okay so and then um if obviously x is not equals to zero let's multiply by x y minus q multiplied by x here is equals to a you know what i'm saying remember now we are looking for what for the domain you know what i'm saying so if we divide here right if we divide over here by y minus q a divided by y minus q you know what i'm saying so we're gonna find the domain what is what is i mean the range so the range in this case, the function is 
undefined. If what is happening, this guy, if y minus q is equals to 0, so the function is going to be undefined there. So what must we take note? y must not equals to q. You know what I'm saying? So that is actually our domain right there. So now y is an element from negative infinity until q. q is not included. I'm going to union that with from q up until positive infinity. So, okay, guys, you're going to see this much more clearly. You know what I'm saying? As we go further, right? So, okay, let's continue. Okay. So, let's do an actual example, you know? So, let's say this is our example right here, example, right? So, we've got h of x is equals to 1 divided by x plus 4. Right, and then we are asked now to find the domain. Find the domain and the range of this particular function. So, as far as the domain is concerned, so x is, will be an element of real numbers. In other words, x exists everywhere except x must not be equals to zero. You know, so this is the domain, right? Or we can say from negative infinity up to zero, I'm going to union that from zero to positive infinity. That is the domain. But now what about the range of this function? What about the range of the function? So um, we're looking at search of the y values, or rather let's use h of x, right? So h of x, in our case, is an element of real numbers. However, h of x must not equals to what? Which value um, are, we sub are we not supposed to have? So h of x must not equals to um, 4 in this case. So this is the range of this function. You know what I'm saying? So or we can write it like this. And then from infinity up to 4. Remember this is um, vertically now, right? So this is going to be the domain of the function, you guys. So that's how we actually gonna we actually look at it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And also, guys, there is another important thing as far as these functions are concerned. You cannot speak about functions if you do not speak about intercepts. Right? You cannot speak about functions without speaking about its intercept. Then the y-intercept, for the y-intercept, you let x equals to zero. You know what I'm saying? So when x is, is, is equals to zero, you're going to find the y-intercept. So um, remember, this is the y-axis, right? This is the x, sorry. This is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. The equation of this line is x is equals to zero. The equation of this line is y is equals to zero. So now for the y-intercept, you are looking for the value here at at the y-axis, where the function is going to cut the y-axis, where exactly is it going to cut? However, this line is x is equal to 0, hence you let x equals to 0 in that regard. So now imagine, if you've got h of x, for example, let's use that function, is equal to 1 over x plus 4. h of 0 here, h of 0 is equal to 1 over 0 plus 4. So now before we go any further, we see here that this is going to be undefined. What does this mean now, right? Because you're going to come across stuff like this where you divide by a zero and then you're like, you know, and then you think that you did a wrong thing whereas you're on track, you know? So in this case, guys, it means that h of x does not have um, the x-intercept, right? So it means it will not touch or cut the x axis the x axis right so that is what it means you know what i'm saying um so do not go and collapse there when you actually find that it equals you don't find an actual value so now let's look guys at the x intercept of the graph the x intercept intercept of this particular graph so for x, 
we're looking at where the graph is going to cut the x-axis in this case. So now, um, what we are looking for, we're going to let y equals to 0. Why are we doing this? Because the equation of this line is y is equals to 0. You guys get that? And then, so since that is the case, um, so we're going to say 0 is equals to 1 over x. We are gonna, just going to use this function that we have plus 4. Yeah? So this is how we're gonna, we are solving this function. Remember our function was h of x is equals to 1 over x plus 4. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so this is what we have now. This is what we have. And so to solve for x here, it's going to be 1 over x is equals to negative 4. You know what I'm saying? So now we are solving for x in this instance. So we are just going to divide um we are just gonna um in both sides this is um one over x this is negative four over one so we're just gonna swap it a bit we're gonna have x over one which equals to negative one over four so what does that mean it means x is equals to negative one over four do you guys get that okay so basically now this means that the x intercept is negative 1 over 4 and 0. Do you guys get that? So what this means is that okay, whenever you see a coordinate with a 0, if I'm here um, on the y you've got a 0, just know that that is the x intercept. If on the x here you've got a 0, just know that that is the y intercept. You know what I'm saying? So basically let us continue. So in our case, we have determined that. So now we're going to look at stuff called asymptotes. We cannot, we just cannot speak about hyperbolas without mentioning asymptotes. Asymptotes. Um, in the past videos, we spoke asympt... Yeah, there's something wrong there. Asymptotes, right? I think that's the right way. Asymptotes. So... In the past videos, we looked at um, the parabola. You know what I'm saying? We look at the parabola and the linear function, but those graphs never had asymptotes. So these ones had asymptotes. In other words, it, it has got two asymptotes. Asymptotes, right? In the sense that, in fact, these asymptotes are what? helps us to find the domain and the range actually remember guys the function y is equals to 1 over x this function is like this right whatever you do this function in as much as it is coming closer and closer and closer to the to y here to the y axis but it's not going to touch the y axis this one is as much as it is coming closer and closer and closer to the x axis it's not going to touch the x axis in this case so basically what do we have so if you've got y is equals to a divided by x plus q, what are our asymptotes? The first asymptote is y is equals to q. So this is the horizontal asymptote, asymptote, right? So the, that asymptote here is this one, is y is equals to 0. Remember this line, which is the x-axis, um is the equation of it is y equals to zero and then this line its equation is x is equals to zero do you guys get that okay cool fine okay so now these are called asymptotes this is the horizontal asymptote and then we've got the vertical asymptote as far as grade 10 is concerned the vertical asymptote asymptote is x is equals to zero in fact, that is where the function is not defined. You know what I'm saying? Even on the y, at y is equal to q, this function is not defined. Right? Okay, fine. So basically, this is the vertical asymptote and this is the um, horizontal asymptote. And then, guys, there is something special about this graph in the sense that they have an axis of symmetry. Right? symmetry remember for the parabola or for the um, quadratic function they had an axis of symmetry which was this one in this case right so that was x is equals to zero 
You know what I'm saying? However, these ones now, these ones, uh, okay, let me just draw a simple one here. So these ones have two axes of symmetries. Isn't that interesting? So basically, this is the first one. And then if I can just ask you guys, what line is this? This is the line y is equals to x. You know what I'm saying? Remember here we are at 0 and 0. Let me just say x plus 0. I know um, that doesn't make sense to just put a 0 because, well, I could have just said y is equals to x. And then this one here is y is equals to minus x plus 0. So this 0 here is just the y um, intercept of the line. The line passes here at 0 and 0. Hence, that's why I like placed a 0 there. You know what I'm saying? So in general now, for functions of this nature, if the function is f of x is equals to a divided by x plus q, then the axis of symmetry is actually two of them. The first one is y is equals to x plus q. The second one is y is equals to minus x plus q. So those lines are the axis of symmetry of the graph. And then now guys finally finally to sketch the function obviously you need to know the value of a in terms of its um the sign right so you might have a function like this so let's say f of x is equals to minus a divided by x plus q so a here let's say if a itself is positive this is going to be negative so do not be confused when you see stuff like this minus a divide by x plus q stuff like this so this is a negative a in other words you guys get that okay fine then you need to know the sign of a such that if a is positive you know that your function is here and here and then if a is negative you know that your function is here and here do you guys get that and then also you need to know a you need to know okay your a there you need to know the intercept. The intercept. Remember now, guys, that um okay, for example, this function. Um this function, there is no way that it cuts the x-axis or the y-axis. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so this function, let's say y is equals to one over x. This guy is not gonna have um the y intercept. You know what I'm saying? Also, it's not going to have the x-intercept because at those particular places, it is undefined, right? Um, so do not be shocked sometimes, especially for hyperbolic functions when you don't see the intercept and stuff like that. So let not your heart skip a bit there. Then you, need, you guys need to know the asymptote, um, such that you've got a horizontal asymptote. For grade tens, y is equal to q. Then the vertical asymptote is x is equals to zero. You know what I'm saying? For um for for for, for grade tens, right? However, immediately you shift the graph horizontally, then this is gonna change, right? Okay, guys. So um we're gonna do some examples now where we're gonna engage this kind of work. So just stay tuned and um. Do let me know in the comments or you can email me if there was anything that was uncertain. Do stay blessed and enjoy the rest of your day. Do stay tuned for the next video, the video where I'll be doing examples and um, exam type questions. Do stay blessed.